In all my years of coaching, nobody has ever said to me, Philip, how do I pick up the ball? So naturally, I decided to make a video about it. Now, I'm sure you think you know how to pick up the ball, and you probably do, but the questions that I want you to ask yourself are, is it the most elegant way? Is it the most energy efficient way? And lastly, and most importantly, does it strike fear into my opponent's heart? Because it should. So I'm going to show you different ways to pick up the ball. The last way is absolutely pretty cool. But if you want to jump to the last way, see how it works, break a few rackets, come back, wish you hadn't done it, and watch the other ones. Go on, off you go. The bend down and pick it up. Probably only beginners and children should be using this method. The tennis pick up and bounce. Less back bend and more knee bend. The direct tennis pick up. Accomplished in one smooth motion. A scrape and lift. This technique is a little noisy, but effective. The wall flick. Probably the most energy efficient method available. The pooper scooper. Takes a little practice, but separates the improvers from the club players. The triple bounce. We're now getting to methods that require fine control of the racket. This one needs a quick hit with a fast movement back to avoid the bounce hitting the racket strings too early. A golf shot. Looks easy, but isn't. Margin of error is very small. You need to get the frame kissing the floor, not hitting it. The racket breaker. Don't say I didn't warn you. This technique needs a high level of racket control. It's impossible to use on cold squash balls. As you can see, didn't even manage to record a clean hit and catch. Maybe you can do better. The method is exactly the same as the three bounce pickup. One hit and move the racket back as quickly as possible to prevent the ball from hitting the racket too early. And then another hit to power the ball downwards with enough force to bounce higher. It's much harder than the three bounce pickup because using the frame gives you less margin of error. In fact, if you want to learn how to do it, I suggest some practices just bouncing the ball with the edge of your frame. Bouncing upwards is easier than bouncing downwards. When you can do that well, try the pick up again. So there you go. Did I include the ones that you expected me to? Which ones do you use? Let me know in the comments. Are there any that I missed that you think I should maybe make a part two for? No problem. Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. And remember, you're not a pro, but you can train like one. See ya.